Hey folks, this is Kalani. Welcome back to the Battle of the Zarlor Raid Guide. This time we'll be taking down Opulence. This fight is a little bit odd because you can't go directly to the boss due to his Horde Power ability. Whenever the boss is first engaged, he will try to steal the power from the two constructs in the side passages. The boss will gain 100% increased damage and 100% increased health for each construct still alive, so you're going to have to kill them off first. You have a left path with the hand of Inzaji and the right path with Yalat's Bulwark. You need to split your raid down the middle with one tank, half your healers and half your DPS going to the left with the rest of your raid going to the right. We found the left path to be more ranged friendly and the right path to be more melee friendly so if you want to split your raid like that you can. These constructs will move down their pass very predictably, they move one room for every 10% health they lose. When they move into the next room they set the previous room ablaze with consuming flame. There's no going back once you start this little gauntlet. Both constructs have the crush ability, this is a 180 degree AoE which will deal a lot of damage and stun anyone who gets hit. You can tell where this ability will land if you watch the constructs hands. He will raise the left, right or both hands. If he raises the left or right hand, that's the side where he's going to slam. If he raises both hands, the slam will be in front of him. Just be careful, getting stunned can kill you very quickly in this fight. Down the left path, your construct will also use Volatile Charge. This applies a ticking debuff to several players and when it expires it drops an AoE on the floor which will continue to deal damage to anyone standing in it. Drop these off at the sides of the room. On the right side you'll have to deal with Flames of Punishment instead. The boss will charge up briefly before spamming a cone of fire while rotating. You need to make sure you get behind the boss and follow it around. That's the main reason why melee do so well on that side. And that's all the construct abilities you have to worry about, but each room has some surprises for you as well. As you progress down these side passages, you will come upon different traps. The first trap is a flame jet trap. Pretty simple, fire shoots from out of holes in the wall. These holes go back and forth between fire and no fire, so it's fairly easy to dodge. The next trap is a ruby beam. This will spawn on a player, you should see a swirl under your feet, and then start chasing them around for a little bit. It's a typical eye beam that leaves patches of fire on the ground, so try to keep it neat by running in little circles. When you get into the corner room, your screen should go a little green. This is the pulse quickening toxin room. Your entire raid will take increasing damage over time while you stay in here, so you really need to get through this one as quickly as you can. If your raid drops below 50% health, they do get a nice buff to all secondary stats, so that's kind of nice, but we didn't think this was really worth letting people drop too low for. There's one last trap to worry about which places a magic debuff on players called Hex of Lethargy. This deals damage to that player if they try to move, so be sure to dispel these as quickly as possible because moving is fairly important. In the room just before the largest room, you'll get here when your construct reaches 40% health, you should be able to find a whole bunch of jewels. There's a diamond, sapphire, amethyst, ruby, topaz, emerald and opal. Picking up these gems will grant you very special bonuses which will benefit your entire raid. Tanks don't actually have a choice here, you're picking up a diamond whether you like it or not. This will provide you with an extra absorption shield and you'll be taking turns with the diamond on the actual boss. The first tank uses their diamond and then when it expires the other tank taunts and uses their diamond. Rinse and repeat just to make sure you don't die. At least one healer on each side has to pick up an amethyst. This applies a shadow damage protection buff on anyone you heal, so you need to spread that buff to your entire raid so they don't die to the massive amounts of shadow damage in the fight later on. One healer per side needs an amethyst. All of the other healers can pick up sapphires which provide a nice damage and healing boost to your entire raid when you start stacking up the buff. One DPS on each side, preferably a DPS with very little or no downtime, like a dot class, needs to pick up a ruby. The ruby will apply a damage increase debuff on your target, which you will need to finish off the constructs and to kill the boss quickly. A handful of mobile ranged DPS should pick up the topaz. This gem allows you to eventually gain a 100% crit chance buff which you can share with your entire raid, but you have to stand alone to to get enough stacks to actually get that buff. So you stand by yourself until you get the grossly incandescent buff, then stand with other players to share the crit chance. If you have 4 or 5 players with the topaz and you move them in and out properly, you can actually maintain that 100% crit chance for the remainder of the fight. The next most useful gem is probably the opal. Whenever you hit a new target you gain a damage boost. This won't do much while you're fighting the construct and it won't even kick in for a little bit on the boss, but eventually the boss will spawn a bunch of adds which will give you a lot of bonus damage later on. The only other choice is the emerald which gives you a stacking damage buff whenever you stand still. Trust me on this, you won't be standing still enough to take advantage of this. The opal will be much better unless you can avoid absolutely everything without moving an inch. 
On heroic mode, whenever you steal a jewel, you'll get a debuff which will deal lethal shadow damage after 30 seconds. If you don't have the shadow protection buff from a healer with the amethyst, you're going to die. Make sure one healer on each side has an amethyst and is spreading the love. You should know which gems you're picking up before you start the fight so you can get through that room as quickly as possible. There's nothing worse than people just, ooh, which gem do I want today? Ooh, let's, ooh, they're the waste a lot of time. In the room after the jewels, when the constructs reach 30% health, this is where you'll finally get to kill them. On normal, it's just business as usual. Deal with the mechanics as you've seen them so far, but on heroic mode, the constructs will overload, causing them to deal constant damage to random players, and both Volatile Charge and Flames of Punishment become empowered. Volatile Charge will be applied to more players, so you run out of room faster, while Flames of Punishment will start to cover the entire room. Both of these will end up being a problem if you can't kill the constructs quick enough. As a quick note, you want to split your DPS as evenly as possible. Ideally, your constructs will die at the exact same time because you can't engage the boss at all if a construct is still alive due to the horde power ability we talked about before. So if one construct keeps dying way before the other, you need to slow down on your DPS or rearrange your groups to even things out. After the constructs are dead, you can finally move on to opulence for real. The fight from this point is actually pretty easy, especially considering you just looted a whole bunch of crazy OP gems. The first ability you have to worry about is liquid gold. This applies a dot to a random player, and when it expires it drops an AoE pool on the floor. Drop these off to the side, don't stand in the pool. The boss will also summon several spirits of gold. They'll spawn on top of the boss and move to the sides of the room. Try to keep them grouped up as much as possible so you can AoE them down really quickly. AoE grips, AoE stuns, anything to keep them in place. If they get to the edge of the room they'll start channeling, flinging gold at random players which hurts a lot and deals damage in a little AoE kill them before they start channeling. The last ability he has on normal is Whale of Greed. This deals a large amount of shadow damage to the entire raid every two seconds. If your amethyst healers are on the ball, this won't be a problem at all. If you die, it's because your amethyst healers weren't on the ball. Every time the boss finishes a Whale of Greed, he'll gain a stacking 15% damage increase, which acts as your enrage timer. Kill him before he kills you. On Heroic, you have a few other things to worry about. Coin Sweep deals a huge amount of damage to the tank and in a small radius around him. Don't stand on top of the tanks, and your tank needs to make sure they have enough mitigation to actually survive the hits. The other Heroic only ability is Coin Shower. A large pile of coins will fall onto a random player after 10 seconds. When you see the large AoE marker, everyone needs to stack in it to split the damage. If you don't all stack, chances are one or two players are going to die. We just had the player with this ability run into the melee and everyone stacked as best they could. Honestly, getting through the gauntlet cleanly is probably harder than the boss itself, but I think this is definitely one of the most fun encounters in this raid tier so far. But that's all you should need to take down opulence on normal and heroic. Stay tuned for more boss guides to help you conquer the battle of Dazar lore. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, you can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.